No Man Are Foreign by James Kirkup. Remember, no man are strange, no countries foreign. Beneath all uniforms, a single body breeds like ours. The land our brothers walk upon is art like this, in which we all shall lie. They too, aware of sun and air and water, are fed by peaceful harvests, by war's long winter start. Their hands are ours, and in their lines we read a labor not different from our own. Remember, they have eyes that like ours wake or sleep and strength that can be won by love. In every land is common life that all can recognize and understand. Let us remember, whenever we are told to hate our brothers, it is ourselves that we shall dispossess, betray and condemn. Remember, we who take arms against each other, it is the human art that we defy. Our hells of fire and dust outrage the innocence of air that is everywhere our own. Remember, no man are foreign and no countries strange. Hello everyone and welcome to this new session of online English class with your teacher Saroy. Today I am going to take upon myself the very difficult task of teaching the very first poem in your textbook No Man or Foreign written by James Kirko. From my long experience of teaching English literature, I know that the majority of you have a strange aversion to poetry. For some strange reason, you don't seem to like poetry and that makes teaching poetry a challenging job for a teacher. Let me see whether I can change this perception, whether I can bring about a change in your perception or not. But before we get started with the poem, let's try to get familiar with the poet James Kirkup. James Kirkup was an English poet who was born in 1918 and died in 2009. Besides being a poet, he was a translator, travel writer and a teacher. He left England in 1956 to live in Europe, the Americas and Japan. The poem no man or foreign dwells on the theme of universal brotherhood. In the poem, the poet stresses the fact that we human beings belong to the same human family. We are all brothers and sisters and the planet Earth is our common home. It belongs to all of us. Now, when we treat somebody as different from us, we become prejudiced and biased towards them, against them rather. Now this bias or prejudice leads to hatred, enmity, hostility, which in turn may lead to war. And war is evil. It is catastrophic. The outcome of war is untold human suffering and misery. So, 
the poet tells us that we need to avoid war at all costs and we should live in unity. We should live in unity, harmony and peace. So this is the essence of this poem. Now, I'm going to take up the poem and I'll explain each line to you. So stay tuned. Remember, no man is strange, no country is foreign. In this line, the words strange and foreign are synonymous. They are interchangeable. They convey the same idea. Strange or foreign means unfamiliar. Something that we don't understand. Now, when we don't understand something, we tend to view it with suspicion and hatred. But according to the poet, every member of the human being, every member of the human race is our brother and sister. So this is an important message that we need to bear in mind. And then the next line, beneath all uniforms, a single body breathes like ours. Now look at the word uniforms. The word uniforms refers to soldiers or military personnel belonging to armies of different nations. It could also mean the different costumes owned by people in different parts of the world. Now, we may be wearing different kinds of clothes. These are only outward differences, external differences. But despite these outward differences, external differences, basically, we are the same. The same heart beats in every human body. The human body is structurally the same. Every human body is uh, made up of trillions of cells. Now, um, I live in India. My blood group is A positive. But suppose I meet somebody from the United States and he has the same blood group, A positive. Both of us, we can donate blood to each other. We can exchange or blood in case of a medical emergency. So here I share my blood group with a person from the United States. That shows that essentially we are the same. Uh, the next line, the land our brothers walk upon is art like this. Here the poet conveys the idea that it doesn't matter uh, in which part of the world we live in. It is part of the same planet. So the boundaries that exist between two nations are artificial. They are man-made. If we forget about the boundaries that exist between two nations, then we can feel that we are members of the same human race we belong to the planet Earth, and this Earth, it belongs to each one of us. In which we all shall lie. The word lie means when we are dead, we'll be buried in the same Earth. So we share the same destiny. No matter in which part of the world we die, we are going to be buried in the earth and will become part of the same earth. They too aware of sun and air and water are fed by peaceful harvests. Now here they refers to people of other nations. Now no matter where we live, we are all nurtured by the same sun. We breathe in the same air and we drink the same water, are fed by peaceful harvests. Now when peace prevails, 
we all enjoy bountiful harvest. We grow food and then there is no scarcity. Everyone can have nourishment. But what happens when there is war? When war happens, quite often it leads to famine and starvation. So look at this line. By war's long winter starved. Here war has been compared to winter. Now in winter the landscape turns barren and desolate. Similarly when war occurs, all human lives are lost and the land is devastated. It takes on a barren, desolate look. So when there is war, we suffer from shortage of food. It leads to famine and starvation. I hope you understand the first stanza. Now we'll move on to the second stanza. Their hands are ours and in their lines we read a labor not different from our own. Their hands are ours. Look, every human being possesses a pair of hands and the function of the hand is the same everywhere. We work with our hands. We work with our hands in order to earn a living. And then when you work hard, the hard work leaves its mark in our palm. The palm becomes calloused and the lines in our palm indicate the hard work that you do. And it is common to people all over the world. Remember, they have eyes that like ours wake or sleep. Now, every human being possesses a pair of eyes and the function of the eyes is the same. When we open our eyes, we are awake. When we close our eyes, we are asleep. Here it also means that we all walk hard from the moment we get up to the time when you go to bed. So this is something common to all human beings all over the world. And strength that can be won by love. This line is very important. Here the poet talks about the importance of love. We know that love is a very potent force and with love we can conquer hatred, enmity and hostility. With love, we can win over even a person who is superior to us in strength. In every land is common life that all can recognize and understand. Now, what is this common life? Common life refers to characteristics or features that define a human society. Now here, think of birth or marriage or death. These things are common to every human society all over the world. Now when a child is born, it is a joyous occasion and we all celebrate. When a wedding happens, we sing and dance. And when someone dies, we mourn the death. So these are things which are common to human society all over the world. Now let's move on to the third stanza, the final stanza. Let us remember whenever we are told to hate our brothers. Now, who tells us to hate our fellow beings? These are people with vested interests. They are warmongers. They instigate us, they incite us to hate our fellow beings. Now what happens when you hate our fellow beings or we kill them? It is ourselves that we shall dispossess, betray and condemn. The word dispossess means when something is taken away from you, when you are deprived of something. Well, if you hate a fellow human being or if you kill him, then you are depriving yourself 
of a member of your own family, the human family. And then the word betray means to break trust. Well, you are supposed to take care of your fellow human beings. You're not supposed to hate or kill them. So when you do that, you are breaking the trust. You are, in fact, letting yourself down. And what is the meaning of the word condemn? Condemn means to punish. Well, when you hate or kill somebody, you punish yourself. Because you will always suffer from an inherent sense of guilt. And that feeling of guilt will haunt you forever. So it is a punishment. Remember, we who take arms against each other, when we take arms, we wage wars. And I've already mentioned that war is evil. It is the human art that we defile. When you defile something, you violate the sacredness or sanctity of it. Now, war causes devastation and destruction. Oh, this is the meaning. We, we defile the human art. We violate the sanctity of the human art. Our hells of fire and dust outrage the innocence of air that is everywhere our own. To outrage the innocence of air means to pollute the purity of air. Now, when war happens, uh, there will be bullets flying around, there will be bombs dropping and shells exploding. This is like being in the hell. And the dust and the smoke that rise up from the battlefield, it pollutes the air. The air became, becomes toxic, unbreathable. Remember, no man are foreign and no country strange. So the poet concludes the poem saying that war is evil. It must be avoided at all costs because essentially we all are members of the same human race. We must embrace entire humanity as our own. Nobody is a stranger. No one is different from us. Basically, we are the same. So this brings us to the end of the poem. Now let me sum up the poem for you. Well, according to James Kirkhope, we belong to the same human race. We are members of the same human family. The planet Earth belongs to all of us and it is our common home. We are nurtured by the same sun we breathe in the same air and we drink the same water, no matter in which part of the world we live in. And then he tells us that when peace prevails, we all enjoy bountiful harvests. But in the event of a war, we suffer from food shortage. It leads to starvation and famine. Then the poet tells us that no matter where we live, we human beings possess a pair of hands and a pair of eyes, and the functions of these two organs are the same all across the globe. And then he tells us about the importance of love in human society. Love enriches human society. Love can conquer hatred, enmity, and hostility. And then he talks about common life. Common life refers to characteristics or features that define human society all across the globe, like birth of a child or wedding or death of a near and dear one. Then in the uh, final stanza, the poet warns us against the horrors of war. He tells us that when we wage war against our fellow beings, 
we dispossess, betray and condemn ourselves. We not only destroy human lives, we also destroy the environment in which we live, the ecosystem, which is so, so important for every form of life on earth. So the poet urges us to avoid war at all costs so that we can live in peace, harmony and unity. This is the key message of the poem. Now, uh, I'd like to take up the poetic devices or um, the figures of speech used in the poem. But before that, let me tell you that this poem is written in free verse, which means there is no specific or rhyme scheme in the poem. It follows the natural rhythms of speech. Now, I'd like to talk about three figures of speech or poetic devices that have been used here. Um, one is antithesis, another is pun, and the third one is consonance. Now let me define antithesis for you. Antithesis is a poetic device where two opposing or contrasting ideas are juxtaposed. Juxtaposed means placed side by side. Now if I give you an example, it will become clear to you. Man proposes, God disposes. Now in this sentence, we have two opposing ideas placed together. Let me give you one more example. A small step for man, but a giant leap for mankind. I'm sure you must have heard this saying. This was said by Neil Armstrong when he landed on the moon. Now look at these two ideas, small step and a giant stride. These are two contrasting ideas juxtaposed in the same sentence. So this is an example of antithesis. Now, as far as the poem is concerned, the expression all um, are fed by peaceful harvests by war's long winter start. Now, in this line, two contrasting ideas have been juxtaposed. For instance, fed and starved. When you are fed, you draw nourishment. When you are starved, you go without food. So two opposing ideas are put together here. So this is an example of antithesis. Now let us turn to pun. A pun is a play upon words with more than one meaning. Let me give you an example. I stood there trying to figure out what li how lightning is caused when it struck me. Now look at the word struck here. It has more than one meaning. Struck means the lightning hit me or it could also mean the idea flushed through my mind. An idea hit my mind. So since it has two meanings, uh, it is a pun. Now, as far as the poem is concerned, the expression beneath all uniforms, the word uniforms has more than one meaning. I've already explained to you that in this poem, the word uniforms refers to soldiers or military personnel uh, belonging to armies of different nations. But uniforms could also mean the dresses or costumes worn by people of different regions. So since it is more than one meaning, it is a pun. And finally, our consonants. Now consonants is a repetition of the consonant sound in the middle 
or at the end of a word. Let me repeat. Consonants is repetition of a consonant sound in the middle or at the end of a word. Now, let me give two examples from the uh, poem. First, all shall lie. Look at the word all. We have the consonant sound L here and then the word shell here also we have the consonant sound L and this consonant sound occurs at the end of each word so this is an example of consonants another example aware of sun and air and water aware it ends in the consonant sound R air R water R so the consonant sound R is repeated and that is why it is known as consonants. I hope these points are clear to you. This brings us to the end of the poem. I'm sure this explanation will prove useful to you. In case you have any doubt or confusion, you can always get in touch with me. So I'm calling it a wrap here. Take care of yourself. Stay safe, stay healthy, bye for now.